What's up, Saiyan Army? So what you're seeing on the screen now is leg day. 200 pounds on the Bulgarian split squats for eight sets of three. Easy money. But we're gonna get into a Q&A. So today I posted on Instagram for you guys to ask me questions. If you're not following me on Instagram, follow me at GokuFlex. Let's get into the questions. First question. I've heard drop sets just fatigue the muscle more and aren't helpful at all. Is this true? No, it is not true. Not, not true. No, it is not true. Drop sets can be useful, especially if you're short on time. For me personally, I don't add drop sets too much into my training just because it's hard to track the progression depending on how much you add it to. I think drop sets can be useful. Let's say you're short on time, you just wanna burn out the muscle. Let's say it's your last set of bicep curls and you just wanna, you know, just burn out the muscle, then it's totally fine. Add in drop sets into your training, there's nothing wrong with them. Drop sets, supersets, they're all just tools you can pull out of your belt to use in your training for different scenarios. Did you ever see yourself making this much gains so yes and no sometimes when i look at like a picture of me especially under like good lighting with a crazy pump like um in the last video i did with tehran by the way if you want to see our thousand rep arm day it's now up on tehran's channel go and check it out but yeah especially like obviously he edited the picture and whatnot um but even the regular picture just looked crazy and sometimes under good lighting i'm like damn is that really me but on the flip side, when I first started training, I expected myself to keep progressing. I didn't know what newbie gains was when I first started training. I thought, you know, I'd be like 220 today and just like a mass monster. I did not know that I would be forever stuck in these 170s. <laughs> and honestly, like 10 years ago, I made the goal to get to 180 solid. And it's still been an endless goal of mine to get to 180 solid. But it's all good. It's a progression. What do you think of the new form of Goku is going to be like in the upcoming episodes of Dragon Ball Super? So I'm going to say this without saying any spoilers. So first off, I don't really care. I mean, they just came out with Super Saiyan Blue, which is cool. I want to see more of Vegito. I think Super Saiyan Blue Vegito is cool if they do some kind of tag team action with Vegeta. Um, although I am excited for Gohan. I think Gohan in this upcoming is going to get his ass kicked. But since Gohan likes to fight for others, he doesn't like to fight for himself, but he likes to fight for others. I think he has a good chance of making a big comeback in the tournament. Thinking about competing in the future. Yes, honestly, I hate dieting. And if I compete, it's just going to be strictly for YouTube so, to take you guys along the journey. For those of you guys have, who have competed before, you know, you guys know how the struggle, how it is dieting when you know your energy levels are low you go into zombie mode you can't even get it up because you have no sex drive your hormones get all messed up and that's the worst part of dieting is probably like the hormonal fluctuation you know your temper gets a lot shorter you don't feel like doing anything and it's just hard on the body and competing is not something that's healthy to do on a consistent basis and even for some people just healthy to do period you know it takes a certain type of person that's a competitor that likes to compete and for the me that's not me but yes i have plans of competing in the future what are one of the ways you suggest to become sponsored build a following if you can make a company money they will sponsor you that's how it goes thoughts on test boosters love your video waste the money what's the best way to handle nighttime cravings when cutting all right so i'm gonna give you guys my secret to curbing your appetite at night and to stop those cravings now first off what i suggest you guys do is if you know that you're weakest at night and that's when you're gonna mess up on your macros and snack then save your calories for nighttime you know fast during the day eat very small meals light in calories during the day and save majority of your calories for nighttime second thing i recommend is pick something that you're craving whether it be like oreos or ice cream and save that till right before bed that's what I always do. If you go back to any of my day of eating videos, this is what I always do. By the way, if you guys want more day of eating videos, comment it down below and let me know. But what I would do is I would save like Oreos, ice creams, or maybe like ice cream and, and Oreos if I can fit it in my macros. But I would save my best, you know, sweetest snack that was gonna curb my sweet tooth for right before bed and then I'll just eat that, feel satisfied, and then go to bed right after. Brush my teeth, go to bed. Will you be at the Arnold? Yes, I will. I'll be at the Alpha booth. More details coming soon, but we will all be there with the whole Alpha crew. It's going to be a blast. I'll see you guys there. What's your best advice for teen bodybuilders? One, perfect form. Don't injure yourself. Learn how to bench, squat, deadlift with all perfect form. Focus on the progression. Learn how to stay consistent in the gym. And if you're in an unhealthy range of body fat, get into a healthy range of body fat. If you're already in a healthy range of body fat, then bulk. Bulk, bulk, and bulk and enjoy those newbie gains. How do you overcome being discouraged when you have a bad week after doing well for months? You just get back on it. That's it. It's simple. Like, I 
I've had more bad workouts than most of you guys have even worked out. Like I've had countless and countless and countless of bad workouts. Even if I don't talk to talk about it on camera, some of you guys see it on Snapchat and whatnot, on IG story. But I have a lot of bad workouts, and that's just how it goes, you know. And that's what separates the Yamchas and Yajirobis from the Super Saiyans is how you handle those bad times in life, how you decide to, how you react to it. Because life is 98% of what life throws at you, 2% how you react to it. And you choose how you react to a certain situation. So if you decide that to like stop working out, quit your workouts, oh it's not for me, you know, I'm having a bad week, you know, it sucks, I'm out, then you're gonna be Yamcha and Yajirobe. But if you learn to just roll with the punches, get back up, pick yourself back up and go back in it and kill it, you will eventually get yourself to a good workout. And that's where you will make gains and that's where you will ascend. And this is just life in general. This is how success in life, any business you do, any type, anything you want to be good at, that's just how it goes. Doggy or missionary? Doggy! How do you tell a girl you don't want to hang with her because you want to lift instead? So this is what you're going to do. You're going to look down, grab your Dragon Balls, and you're going to tell her and explain to her that lifting is a priority in your life and you have goals, you have dreams, and lifting is part of it. And if she still doesn't understand after that, then maybe she's not the one for you. Ultimate cheat meal. If calories didn't exist and you wouldn't get fat for one day, what would you eat all day? So this is how it would go. First off, I would go back to Hawaii in the morning, get some brunch. I would eat a lobster, eggs, benedict, and guava chiffon pancakes for brunch because brunch is my favorite meal of the day and they are delicious. For lunch, I would come back to New York and I would get Roberta's, their um, bee sting pizza, which is flipping delicious. I would eat the whole thing. It's um, pretty much honey with some like chili pepper and mozzarella. It's so flipping good. For a snack, I would go to Gramercy Tavern and get their delicious burger. For dinner, I would go to Ipudo or some kind of like sushi restaurant, probably Ipudo. Ipudo is like the Ichi Raku Ramen of New York City. It is the bomb. And I would get Japanese food just for dinner just to keep it like semi I'd probably be like tired of all this rich food. For dessert, I'd get something real simple. I'd probably either go to like Rice to Riches or Levine Bakery and get a cookie, something like that. And that would be my day. Comment down below what you would eat. Anyways, that's the end of the Q&A. Leave a like if you liked it. Comment down below more questions for future Q&As and I'll see you guys in the next video. Much love, strength, and honor. Aloha. So was gonna cut the video there, but decided to extend it a little bit and show you guys a little bit of my day, some of the food I eat, and just take you guys along because we are going out later today. Lunch is here, chicken teriyaki. We got California rolls. We got, what is that again? Spring rolls. Spring rolls. Salad, miso soup, chicken donbori and Chris is watching John Olsen. This is how I like to eat the miso soup. You get your rice and the miso soup. You eat it with a spoon. Also just got in new joggers from Alpha. Light fleece gray, light fleece charcoal, red, I've been waiting for red joggers forever. I used to rock the shit out of their old red joggers. We just finished getting ready. My new Gel Light 5 just came in. I'm not a sneakerhead, but Piccolo's been telling me to get the A6 for a while now, and I gotta say, they are very comfortable. Anyways, we're heading to the movie theater now. We're gonna go see John Wick in 4DX, our first 4DX movie, so let go. just got home from John Wick. First off, John Wick was over 9,000. If you haven't seen it, go and watch it. I highly recommend it. Also, uh, that was our first 4D movie experience. So for those of you guys who don't know what 4D movies are, basically, I didn't even know going prior to going to this movie. Basically, like let's say it's raining outside, water will shoot you in your face for like a second. Like let's say John Wick's in the car, your chair will like vibrate. If he like makes a left turn, your chair will turn left, they'll turn right. So it's kind of like you're in like one of those movie, 4D movies um, at theme parks and whatnot. Like let's say someone like shoots at John, um, air will shoot at your face kind of thing. Anything else I'm missing? Like when someone punches, when John punches someone, the chair like punches you in the back. Yeah, yeah. Which is so cool. Yeah, let's say like John Wick gets like thrown on the ground, like the chair will like punch you in the back. You like feel the impact in your chair. So like, it's almost like a massage chair that's just punching you in your back kind of thing. So it's almost like you're, yeah, it's almost like you're there and then there's like fans up top that shoot like air at you and whatnot. And yeah, so it's like all the effects. 
it was about $25 per ticket so it was like $50 for both of us for me personally I didn't think it was really worth it I think it was a good experience I don't think I'd do it again until like VR I think with virtual reality coming in I think it would be a very good experience when VR kicks in um, but that's just my opinion. Chi Chi really liked it, yeah? Yeah, I was like smiling throughout the whole movie. Yeah, she really enjoyed it. She would do, do the whole 4DX again. She thought it was well worth the money. And yeah, that's her opinion. Anyways, hope you guys all have a great night. Have a great weekend. I'll see you guys in the next video. Much love, strength, and honor. Aloha. Vegeta, what does the scouter say about his power level? It's over 9,000!